freaking first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cup Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your round two recap for this week's Masters. Joining me to break it all down, Patrick McDonald is here. Patrick, good evening. Good evening, fellas. Uh, tough one out there at Augusta National. I feel for everyone on the grounds who had to take in that that brutal wind. Oh, how dare they, the, these pampered golfers. You hear some of these quotes walking off the course, Rick? Unbelievable. I'm sure we'll get into it, and we got a lot to get into tonight. Yes, uh, it'll be reflected in my report about uh, how harsh those conditions were, and uh, my body hurts. Uh, Greg Ducharme is here. Hello, Greg. What's going on, boys? Um, incredible day of golf, and I I legitimately feel for him. I was exhausted just watching. It, I'm stressed. That is that golf course with that kind of wind is un. It's got to be the toughest golf course in the world. It's just so challenging. Uh, And it looked like throughout the day, they only, they became even more sustained. It was just hauling all day. It was, it was brutal. Uh, We had a lot of people say that was the windiest day they've seen at Augusta national in a while. The, the sand was blowing out of the, bunkers um there was a lot of guessing being done the way that that broke down statistically patrick was basically 3.1 strokes over par so that's 75 and a hair if you shot a 74 you moved up the leaderboard today that's two over that's how strokes gained works that's a that's good i didn't know that's how it worked um can can i read a john ron rom quote on the conditions I would prefer if you did. Yes. So, uh, very hard. A couple times questioning myself why we were out there, especially when I got to 18 and saw the whole front of the green just full of sand. It's rolling a little bit different. I understand they want us to finish. I imagine they were close to calling it a few times, especially when we were on 11 green and we're getting those massive gusts. It's extremely difficult. Dot, 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 dot. It was very, very close. It's about as hard a golf course I've seen in a very long time. Poor John Rom. You got to feel for the defending champion. Like you said there, Rick, 75 implosion after implosion after implosion coming down the stretch. How, do you see how many guys? Rick, I don't know if you got to experience that cut sweat. Oh yeah. my goodness. Oh my gosh. I don't know how it moved to plus six. And all these guys got bailed out by their buddies and whatnot. Someone told JT Tiger was outside the cut line and he, a 2023 masters finish again uh but yeah look good shots were rewarded at the end of the day and you saw that with guys guys got in red figures still got you know, a guy broke 70 and you saw bad shots get punished and i'm sorry that's hap- that happens to these guys four times a year and some of them are up for the task and some of them would rather complain it was a fun cut sweat and there was a lot of carnage. And the thing about it, Greg, is I realized this very early in the day that this was going to be a problem because when they restarted this morning and had to finish round one, I started looking at the scoring averages. There was rumors going around the grounds that Jordan Spieth made a nine on 15. Um, the 15th hole in general was chewing guys up and spitting them out. And then the second round began, and before anybody even got to the eighth hole, the scoring average was already a stroke and a half over par. And I was doing the napkin math, and I was like, "This is this is going to be nuts." It was all day long. There were there was no reprieve. There was no wave advantage. It was bad all day. No, and and that west wind is so tough because, like you said, fifteen eating guys lunch, uh, thirteen plays into the wind when you're when you're looking at that wind direction it's extremely difficult and and the holes that are downwind you almost don't want downwind like seven and 17 um they become very difficult those are not very long holes they require distance control and you saw guys going long a 17 which is okay it's okay to get up and down from back there but very hard to stop the ball very hard to get the distance right so no matter which way it was blowing uh, it was it was just extremely difficult. And, and I find 
this really interesting. You don't see this very often. If you look at the top four guys in strokes gain around the green through two rounds at the Masters, they're all inside the uh, And you got to go all the way down to the 17th ranked player in strokes gain around the green to find somebody who missed the cut. So everybody who was pretty good around the greens is able to get inside that cut line. And most of them are up near the top of the leaderboard. That's because so many greens are missed and short game had to be relied on to such a high degree. All right, let's jump into this, boys. The notables that had to finish uh, round one and then get quickly back out onto the golf course came from the same group. They were Max Homa and Tiger Woods. Homa puts the finishing touches on a 567 in the morning. Tiger makes a couple of bogeys, cards a 73. That is one over when he finished his rounds. We thought the cut was going to be maybe two over, three over, more on that in just a bit. But those guys go right back out, and Max Homa starts putting something together, Patrick, and he starts playing some really solid golf. This was a day where par was often a good score at Augusta National, but uh, Homa was doing better than that. He got to the 11th tee at two under. He made one bogey on 11, parred out the rest of his holes. This was solid. This was sound. And he is going to enter the weekend as a co-leader of the Masters. It was very impressive. And we mentioned last night how he leaned on his putter in round one. And today it was a stripe show. It was fairway after fairway after green after green. I mean, to hit 15 greens today in those conditions is, is nuts. That That is some real-time, big-time ball striking. And it was how you're supposed to play major championship golf. You don't go for every pin when you do miss a fairway, like on number five, having to lay up out of the fairway bunker, hit a nice wedge, roll in a 10 footer. And for someone like Max Homa, he even said after his round that playing with Tiger kind of helped him in a sense. We hear all the time how playing with Tiger can hinder these guys because there's so much distractions going around. And he kind of flipped it and was like, everyone's focused on Tiger Woods here. No one cares what I'm doing. And he said it kind of freed him up. He, he said if he was in the lead playing with a couple, you know, any two other guys, it might have gotten to his head previously. But everyone's just, no one really cared Max Homo was in the lead in that grouping, right? They cared about Tiger Woods. And so he said that helped him a lot. And I think just the step he's taken mentally uh, working with Julie. I mean, talk about a, a stock rising, Julie. Uh, I her last name's is Elion. Her, yeah. her, her stock is rising so much that Patrick can't remember her last name. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, I mean, she works with everyone now. Wyndham Clark, Akshay, Max Homa. It seems like every, everyone on the PGA tour got her card from Wyndham Clark. And, and now everyone's, everyone's going to win every week. But uh, there were some, I guess the down, the negatives of his, uh, his round were the driver, which has been kind of a bugaboo lately for Homa. But in front of Tiger, first time contending in a major championship, he he's once again taking a big step in his career. It was very impressive, and I, I think he has a lot of staying power over the weekend, even though he doesn't have the experience of the other guys. I, I like the progression angle here, Greg, because the Max Homa's career is defined by progression, just every year getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. He has wilted at major championships in his career. He has wilted when he has played with Tiger Woods in his career. He got both of those over the first 36, and he did quite the opposite, 67, 71, 6 under. And now we're going to learn a lot more about Max Homa this weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's really the first time we've seen him uh, in the mix as uh, somebody near the top of the favorites board heading into the weekend. But there's a, there's a lot of things that he can lean on. You know, like Patrick, you mentioned the struggles with the driver. Um, when he hit errant tee shots, he is still able to save par. I mean, the one at five is one, but the one at seven stands out to me. Gets himself into tree trouble, able to uh, hit a great shot there, make par. Um, so, look, he, his iron play has been phenomenal, uh, especially today. Like you said, 15 greens, third and strokes gain approach for the week, third and strokes gain approach for the day with that conservative strategy. 
Um, and when he does get himself in trouble, his short game and putting has been uh, spectacular. So this feels like it's beyond the physical for Max Homa, and it's completely gone to a mental test. Now, what I'm very curious about, especially with Max, is as the conditions, I, I don't want to say get easier, but as the wind calms down and there are more birdies available on the golf course and you start to see guys make charges, uh, is Max Homa going to be able to keep up that pace, the kind of pace that he showed us yesterday? Because um, grind at six under, grinding out for pars isn't going to be enough. I think you're going to have to get to double digits at least for the weekend, um, even as firm and fast as it'll be. So I'm I'm curious to see what he can do going forward. But right now he's checking all the boxes. Uh, I believe what, when I was walking out of the uh, press center, I believe he, I looked up and it said he was first in greens and regulations high with Bryson DeChambeau. So yeah. uh, finding a lot of putting surfaces around Augusta national. We are going to chat a lot more. We have a million things to cover, but we also have to pay the bills. So we are going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. We need your sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. And we're back. Playing alongside Max Homa was one Tiger Woods. And uh, Tiger entered round number two at one over, like we had mentioned, or like I've mentioned earlier, thought maybe two or three. Uh, didn't really understand how difficult Augusta National was going to play on Friday. Tiger was uh, having a two-pencil day on his, on his first nine. It's par, par, birdie, bogey, bogey, birdie, bogey, birdie, par. Uh, a much more calm second nine, a bogey on 14, a birdie on 15. And just like that, Greg, Tiger Woods cards an even par round of 72, which gains him three shots to the field, and he becomes uh, the sole record holder for most consecutive cuts made at the Masters with 24, a staggering amount. It's a staggering amount. Like he said, he's been playing here since he was 19 years old, right? He's made every single cut every time he's played here since 1997. Uh, just absolutely incredible. And it's clear, especially on a day like this, that he understands the golf course at a level not many do. Uh, and and it still requires phenomenal shots, especially, especially around the green. And some of these shots Tiger played... Um, like I, I thought he played a great shot into number two uh, and, and missed a, a very makeable putt. But but the one at nine, the up and down at nine, uh, the up and down at 11 was ridiculous. Oof. The up and down at 17 was great. 18 was fantastic. So what he what he does with his touch is a lot better than I expected. It was my biggest concern coming in. He's answered that question beyond belief. Um, but be interested to get your thoughts on this, Patrick. Going forward, he's going to have to... I know the conditions will be different, but he's going to have to hit some better approach shots in there if he wants to really make a move. Yeah, I agree. And honestly, I was... After seeing him come back this morning, I was concerned about him. We saw the first approach shot of the day. He chili dipped a wedge, makes bogey. His walk is much more methodical and he's got to look at Jason Day's Malbon sweater vest the entire day and you're thinking to yourself, "Oh god, I've seen this movie before. I know how it ends." Adds another bogey, you know, comes in at at one over for the first round, quick turnaround, had like 30 40 minutes to get ready. Uh and, and Greg like you said, it was just you put anyone else in the positions where Tiger Woods was today and like I legitimately don't know if they break 80. Just he hit eight greens and shot even par at Augusta National today. That is ridiculous. And 30 but, mile an hour wins. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's great in these conditions when the scoring average is 75. But like you said there, Greg, the iron play needs to be a lot better. Like if he, 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 Tiger says he has a chance, we'll dismiss that for now. Seven back with a lot of good players in front of him. But if he actually does want a chance, you know, to say break 70 and, and maybe post a score tomorrow, 
the the driver's been good enough. I mean, he's hitting that peeler all day long and it's finding the short grass more times than not, but the iron play has just been so disappointing. I look at uh number seven in particular where he had a green light really. And you don't get a lot of those, especially in, in today's conditions. And he, he just hits it in the front bunker. Um, so it, it's kind of like shots like that, where he knows he has the chance to kind of put his foot on the gas and, and he's just driving it in the wrong direction. And so the iron play definitely needs to take a step if he wants to, uh, you know, maybe even like post a top 10 would be insane for him. And, and it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah, the the round he put together aged very well. I think he when he finished, he was like 26. And then he kind of kept improving his spot on the leaderboard. Uh, but like you guys said, if, if, if 75 is, is not the scoring average, he's going to have to make some more birdies. And uh, we'll see how many of those he has uh, in the bag over the course of the weekend. The round of the day. And the round of his career, Ludwig Oberg's 69. The only golfer to break 70 at Augusta National gains him, uh, what's that, six shots to the field, 6.08. That's the best round of his career. He's doing it in the second uh, career round at a major championship, Greg. Um, dude's pretty good. It's uh, pretty fun to watch. I mean, what you can go on masters.com or the app and just watch this round and you watch it yesterday. And I haven't had a chance to watch him play complete rounds like this. His career is so young uh, and, and you just go through shot after shot. They look the same, right? He has this great routine. There's a great tempo to it. There's no hesitation over the ball. He gets in there. As soon as that club gets behind the ball, he goes and it goes where he's looking and he hit some spectacular shots um made the the shot at 9 was just so good uh the the birdie at 12 phenomenal uh and the one at 16 of course he caps it off with a with a great putt uh, and that's the other thing he did he made a lot of really nice par saving putts some some second putts that are in that 4 foot range tricky on greens like this and he was Rock solid on him. So clean. And only two bogeys on... Oh, I guess he made bogey on 18, too. So three three bogeys, um, but plenty of birdies to back it up. The, the thing that I thought was most interesting, Patrick, was that he finished his first round this morning, and it wasn't a great finish. He made bogey on 14, double on 15. And I thought, all right, stage is too big for this kid. Um, but let me tell you, we were... Kind of, we were by the, I don't know what it's called. I don't think it's called the Eisenhower tree. It's like that big oak tree by the clubhouse where they walk past. He walked off 18 green and he was doing that little Swedish smirk. He was cool, <laughs> calm, collected. I had heart emoji eyes. Like I, I was like, this dude's cool. Like I, I dig this because he, he knew what was coming and he put together a special one. I'm not too familiar with, with that one. Uh, Rick, I hope to experience it one day, but it's not yeah, the Eisenhower tree, by the way. That tree was on <laughs> 17. Yeah, it's not. It's the big oak. Oh, it's, it's like the like 180 years old or something. The McDonald oak. If not, you can be black there tomorrow, Rick. Okay. And, uh, we'll claim it. Um, but look, we uh we talked about this. The wind. I know we joked about it last week a little bit. He's he's a Texas boy. He's got <laughs> that in his blood. I'm like I'm not joke like playing Texas golf is much different than say growing up in like the Northeast or, or something like that. Because I mean, not a lot of trees. The wind is whipping. You got to learn how to play it. Obviously, the Swedish smirk as well. But the guy's just he he is the AI version of what a golfer is going to be in the future and beyond. He's Ludwig AI pretty much. And wow, that's actually a good nickname. You yeah, that's probably in, pretty sick, actually. <laughs> you throw in he he he's been praising Joe Scovern all week, praising him. And I don't think that can be like undersold. Someone who was on the bag with Ricky Fowler for numerous years, finished runner up in 2018. He got Tom Kim around Augusta National last year in his first master's appearance, T16. And now he's got Ludwig. And I mean, the guy clearly 
has a feel for Augusta National. And I think in particular, Greg, on the greens too, where, I mean, Ludwig is making like everything, like every putt he has to make, it seems like he's converting. And you couple that with the way he drives the ball and the way his irons have taken a step this year. And you get something like today where, I mean, to make six bog- or birdies is insane. And to play your last, what was it, 11 holes and four under, also insane. And, and it's just it just speaks to the caliber of golfer this guy is in only his first major championship. It's not only his first Masters, it's his, his first major championship. And he has a chance to win it, first since Keegan Bradley. Oh, I was going to say, can you name the last golfer to win in their first major championship? And we you, both would have had that, I guess. Yeah, I think that was a that was shout a out to Duff. Shout out to Duff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think you make a really good point with Joe Scovern, because that takes if you get somebody who can trust it and execute and do what you say and you know where to hit it as a caddy. Um, that's, that takes a lot of the, um, you got to know where to miss it, that all that kind of those, com- those cliche conversations that are actually true. It, it limits a lot of those mm-hmm. uh, and, and Ludwig hits it where he's looking. So Scovern says, hit it at that tree. It's not like, well, why are we aiming 40 feet? Right. No, I'm going to hit it at, I, I want to hit it at that, <laughs> uh, at, at the yellow flag stick right yeah he, he'll if he he's willing to listen and he can hit it there and all of a sudden you got the round of the day and a little crystal and uh and only your second round in a major yeah. scovern's pretty much playing tiger woods pga tour 2008 with uh with ludwig but even like he told ludwig he goes you need to you need to have these shots in your bag for augusta national he told him like months ago when they got together and ludwig entering the week he's like i worked on those like so hard over the past month so pretty cool stuff. If you, if you think having one European Ryder Cup rookie inside the top 10, how about having two Ryder Cup rookies inside the top 10, Captain Luke Donald? Because Nikolai Hoygaard rode a Thursday 67 to a solo fourth after 36. It was a 73 on Friday, Greg. But as we've been talking about, that's plenty good. That's two shots better than the field. And it was it was up and down. No big numbers. Uh, four birdies and two, four, five bogeys in route to that 73. Yeah, This one was a, a little more scrappy than Ludwig, right? He had a couple of errant tee shots, um, got himself out of position. It was a tough go early and really looking like a grind. You know, he was like, we, we came on um, our earlier episode, Patrick, and we were talking about him and it was, Oh, he was fading. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's right up there back in, back in the lead. So it looked like everything came in pairs today. Every time he made a birdie, he made another one right after it. And unfortunately he did the same thing with bogeys for the most part. Uh, But what he has done so well is what he's done around the greens is unbelievable for a rookie. Um, I, I think he actually leads the field in strokes gain around the green uh, for through the two rounds. And he does. And it's a, he's ahead of Scotty Scheffler by a little bit. It comes from a couple of hole outs, right? He holed out from off the green again today at number nine, although he putted it, um, made a long one at 10. Those two, those two really kind of fueled the round. But then you saw the ball striking come together. That shot into 14 with that back left hole location hauling downwind was he landed it in the perfect spot. Uh, the only spot you can to hit it close. And he did. It was it was special. Uh, this was a, a, a weird year for Nikolai Patrick because it, 2023 or excuse me, 2024 hasn't hasn't been great for him. Um, I don't know what it is, but something, you know, you can get to click around here and now he has a chance to um, have his best major finish, have his, have an opportunity to put his name on. I mean, it's very unlikely. I think that he wins this, but it's nice to see that he's playing well. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, It was, I was like, all right, this guy is probably done. And then he just like chips in and and hits a great shot into 14. I mean, he was standing on, on the lead 
through uh, 16 holes. I, I know 17 and 18 are very difficult, but he was there at six under. And I think, uh, you know, we talk about that Ryder Cup leap a lot. And I, I never take put too much into the, the full swing docu. But there was one scene that I found pretty interesting where they were practicing at Marco Simone and Rory McIlroy told him, dude, you're already good enough. You're on the team. You don't have to prove anything to any of us. We all want you here. Just believe that you're good enough. And then he obviously has a good Ryder Cup, wins the DP World Tour Championship, comes over here, nearly wins at Torrey Pines. I mean, shout out Matthew Pavone, top 10 as well. Um, and I know it hasn't been smooth setting, but rarely is it in your first PGA Tour season. But the upside and the confidence in this kid has to be through the roof. We have a lot more to talk about. We have to talk about uh, a golfer who is – Potentially going to add the third leg to the career grand slam to his resume. We've got to talk about a guy who invented a set of irons, uh, had them 3D printed, and now leads the golf tournament. And then we have to talk about the number one player in the world, plus a lot of big names that will not be around for the weekend. But first, we'll take a quick, quick break and hear a word from our partners. At CBS Sports Galazzo Network, we're bringing you the game. Breaking down the game. This is unlike anything else in the world. And changing the game. Get it all for nil. That means free. Whoa. And all day long. 24-7. And we're back. A sneaky little 70 to go along with his Thursday 71 for Colin Morikawa, Greg. And talk about guys who have been in their fields, not able to figure out the state of their game. If Colin Morikawa were to somehow pull this one off, three shots off the lead heading into the weekend, that would be a PGA championship. That would be an open championship. And that would be a Masters. That is three of the four biggies, my friends. Yes. Uh, and there's some positive signs here. We know he's been struggling. We know he's been struggling with his iron play. Um, but he, at this point right now, there's only three guys that have hit more greens of regulation than him. And that's Homa, DeChambeau, and surprisingly, John Rahm. But he has hit 25 greens of regulation. And we all know the magic number is 50 at Augusta. So in these conditions... You go out there and hit 25 greens in, in the first um in the first two rounds. It's a really good sign. He's also he's he's gaining strokes putting, which I think is a, a huge sign. And this guy has the ability to just compete. I mean, you remember what he did at the US Open at Brookline. He he had the his shot shape was backwards. All of a sudden he's playing draws, which he's never done in his whole life. And he was right there in the mix. Of course, he he shot a 77 on Saturday, uh, but he has the ability to figure something out that's going to work, go put a number on the board, uh, and that's exactly what he did today on just a brutal day. A brutal day indeed. And Patrick, we are not too far removed from some of the crooked golf media, myself included, uh, <gasps> reminding everyone that Colin Morikawa cannot play in the wind. Yeah, what? good weather open. People what? forget that. What happened? I don't know. And, you know, he was asked, he does this every single time, like for the past two years when he pops up in a tournament where he's like, you know, I found something, guys. He tells the media, I found something. And they're like, oh, what was it? He goes, sorry, can't tell you. Well, I always not, wonder not why tell you. it's not like anybody else's. It, it's not like you're playing defense. No one can yeah. play defense. It's not like you're playing basketball. And you're like, listen, I invented a way to stop LeBron James from getting to the basket. I can't tell you what it is. That makes sense. Fine. No one's going to take this little tip that Colin gives that only applies to himself. It's like, so, why so they I, and use it to beat him. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're doing that? Are you sure? Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm hoping it's in my mind. It's like, oh, he's putting his right foot in his pants before his left when yeah. normally he does the other, like some uh, tin cup stuff. But 
you know, we've I've I've been asking the question at least like Colin Morikawa without his iron play is an average Joe on the PGA tour. He is. I mean, like just call a spade a spade. He's not a great putter. Usually his around the green game can go up and down. He is a very accurate driver of the golf ball. And we've seen that this week, seventh in driving accuracy, but without that Colin Morikawa iron play that we have been raving about ever since he's come out, he really is just an average Joe And this week. It has returned for whatever reason it has. And it's back to a Colin Morikawa type standard. And that's why you get two rounds under par. Only two guys have done that. Him and Max Homa gone red figures on Thursday and Friday. And then he put in a new mallet putter as well. And he's holding some putts. Maybe it's the honeymoon period with that. Maybe it's not. But I mean, the guy is good in major championships. Like no matter what happens, he is good in major championships. And uh, that de- deserves all the respect in the world. World. I I like the honeymoon phase for him. I think he needs to bounce around. I I wouldn't be surprised if his whole career he was changing putters constantly, like Jim Furyk, right? Just something new lights a spark for him all the time. Bounce back and forth, mallet blade, mallet blade. He he sees an uptick when he makes a switch, and so I have no I have no issue with it. I don't think it's a bad thing that you know it's not real like it's a spark because you, you can just change again so i'm all for it yeah so ma- major championship wise you came into this week playing in 16 seven top tens two wins uh of the top tens he's he has three of those are top fives it's pretty good yeah speaking of major champions bryson D. Sham Bo follows up his Thursday 65 with a Friday 73, one over, but still gains two shots to the field. Uh, the big story this week, Greg, is the iron, the iron set. <clears throat> and he gave a little bit more clarification uh, about this in his, in his post-round interview. He described how it is it is a one of one set he has no backup set um it is 3d printed they were approved he got word that they were approved for uh the conforming list tuesday morning and he immediately put them in the bag but he has been working with them for a while now you described it beautifully uh, yesterday or wednesday at some point where um there is a a, a roll a curvature on these faces uh, that that's been the big story uh, the equipment stuff, but I don't know. I mean, Bryson could be using the the pings that he shot a 58 with and still be playing really well this week. He's done, he's done a lot of good work all over the yard. Uh, he absolutely has. And look, this round today had some ups and downs. He didn't make birdie at number two because he got himself out of position after his tee shot. Uh, at number four, he hit a putt that, I was literally stunned at how at how bad this putt was. I mean, I mean, he it, it was almost like he didn't think he could hit it soft enough. Um, it was go watch it. The his his par putt at number four was just awful. But he rebounds, you know, and he makes a great birdie putt at number seven uh, because he put it in play. I think that really lit a spark for him. Unable to take advantage of eight, which was disappointing for sure. Um, 11, he hit it into the same spot Tiger Woods did and couldn't get that up and down. No surprise. No harm, no foul there. And it's a great shot into into 12. And then 14, and you just got to love the way he played 14 uh, or 13 because he was on 14 for a portion of it. Uh, and the shot he hit in there, you know, um, with that whole location, I didn't think that was a great angle to come in from, but he just hit a phenomenal shot and and rolled in the putt. So, yeah, Bryson's Bryson's looking good because this was this was a solid round today uh, with a three putt on eighteen it was disappointing, but all in all, this is um, he's going to be tough to beat. You're going to have to play really really good golf to beat him. I forgot how much I love Bryson Patrick, and he gave us like just enough in his interview afterwards for me to be like, yeah, he's, 
Kentucky's back, baby, right? He's like, he lets you know he's the smartest guy in the room. He gives you a little nugget to prove it, but then he will not give you anything more than that. I just love it. What uh, what did I also come up though was uh, that this will really be the first time Bryson and Scotty kind of get to go head to head since Scotty became, in Bryson's words, the best player in the world. And then we're going to add Max Max Homa into that mix. Like it, it's going to be cool to see a couple of the big boys battle this out over the weekend. The bromance. Remember in 2021 uh, when people were like, who who are we going to pair Bryson with for the Ryder Cup? And it was Scotty. They're chest bumping, awkward chest bumps on the green, right in front of Rom's face. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, uh, he is, he's driving the golf ball so far. Did you see the screenshot on number 11? Or yes. the shot tracer, you it went off the top of the screen. Yeah, that's how high it is. Into ball, the wind. Yeah, into the, the ball speed is like it, like minimum one ninety. Yeah, I think so. that one on eleven was one ninety one. Yeah, just cr- like the crank driver is cranking at the moment. You throw in the three D printed irons that have like a wood backing. That I mean, that's not talk that. It's obviously being talked about, but it, that might get lost in history that he has 3D printed irons that were approved. It wasn't Monday, Rick. It was Tuesday morning mm-hmm. that the USGA approved them. Mm-hmm. And he, people were like, you got a backup of them? He's like, nope, I got some pings that I shot 58 with at the Greenbrier with. It, it's, it's a reminder of just Bryson being awesome to watch if if you don't like bryson that is fine i like i i don't i'm not in his fan club but he is awesome to watch because one he makes people feel one way or another about him and two he provides priceless moments like carrying the sign <laughs> in amen corner and people mean memeing him like he's jesus christ carrying the cross <laughs> in amen corner just so that he can get an angle to hit a shot it i mean it's vintage stuff and it's awesome to see him see him back uh, on the screen i was sitting next to a a a self-proclaimed uh 3d printing expert and uh, i'm not gonna say we he believes that the, the the material that you would have to use because most 3d printing is like plastics right it's like little little devices or whatever but you can print in some higher quality steels or I don't know, alloys or something like that Um, to print something of that complexity to be that strong um, in the current state of 3d printing. This guy estimated that it would, that's like a $50,000 set of of irons. Wow. Wow. Well, I hey, leave no stone unturned. Leave no stone unturned. I mean, if you're if you're Bryson, it's well worth it, obviously. Uh, but that might be the most expensive set of golf clubs like in the world. Well, it's perfect for uh, a live player, right? That's what you use the initiation for. You use the sign the, the signing bonus to get some new clubs. That's right. <laughs> um the third man. At the top of the leaderboard is a man who's been on top of a lot of leaderboards recently, and it's Scotty Scheffler. And it was a clean 66 on Thursday, and Greg, it was a solid, even par round of 72 on Friday. That is three birdies, three bogeys, and it certainly wasn't perfect. He certainly made some mistakes. He hit it into the water on 13 and ended up making a uh, a bogey there. But uh, all things considered, this was this was kind of what you needed to do. Coming out of the second to last group, the penultimate group, when conditions were really uh, at their most difficult. They were brutal. And this is exactly what makes Scotty Scheffler the number one player in the world. I mean, you think about all the up and downs he made, some of them for birdie on par fives like number two, uh, but some of them critical up and downs for par number four, where he had to hold a really difficult putt, a similar putt to the one Tiger Woods missed. Uh, the up and down at six knocks it stone dead from left of the green. Those were phenomenal. The, a great up and down at eight for birdie. Uh, up and down at nine after making a 
you could call that a mistake coming up short with his second shot there. He did not have a long way in a backstop behind the, behind the whole location there. He comes up short down the false front, but gets it up and down. So this round was uh, defined by really, really high quality short game shots that took a lot of the stress out of the round for him because he knocked these uh, inside gimme range on many occasions. It was um, kind of a, a an exercise of educated guessing with with the winds out there and the way that they were the way that they were swirling. A uh, couple of solid putts from Scotty. I think that he has gotten a lot more disciplined and understands the ebbs and flows of a golf tournament. Patrick, he knows that you are not going to win the Masters on Friday afternoon. You can lose it. We saw plenty of that, which we'll talk about. Um, but this is this is positioning, and now. The wave advantage is gone. Everybody who is at six under is going to play at the same time and all that fun stuff. So uh, it feels like this championship is now ready to begin. Yeah. T today was a perfect example why Scotty Scheffler is the best T to green player in the world. It was a tough day with the irons for everyone. You know, he does. He mashes the ball off the tee and he has the best, you know, some of the best hands in the world still. I thought he was going to, I was going to put his stamp on this tournament to tell you the truth around the turn after the uh, birdie on eight, the par on nine, and then to rip driver down 10 like that and stuff the approach inside 10 feet and make the birdie. I'm like, Oh my God, this guy, this freaking guy is going to do it. He's going to get to like eight under hold a two stroke lead going into tomorrow. But uh, I mean, he, he would have gotten there if not for the shot on a uh, 13. You only get lucky once around Amen Corner. Took advantage mm -hmm. yesterday. Hits it in the water this time around. Pays the penalty. Makes bogey. If not for that, he's got a two-stroke lead more likely than not. But it it's just there's not enough words you can say about Scotty Scheffler at the moment and over the last two years for what he has done. It's just week in, week out. Repeat it. It's like turn on your TV on the back nine on Sunday. Scotty Scheffler is going to have a chance to win. And it seems like we are on that path, certainly this week. Oh, mama. Okay. We've got a lot brewing. Now, there are plenty of other notables in this field. We'll kind of go a little bit rapid fire here, gents, because we got a lot to get through. Uh, our defending champion, Greg John Rom, flirted with the cut line all afternoon. Now, the theme here is going to look something like this. Um, for a lot of the afternoon, the cut line was five over thanks to a few generous implosions late in the round a few ejections very late in the day it moved to six over so the sixes got in john rom was having a sweaty sweaty day greg he made a double on 14 to go to six over which at the time we did not think was going to get in Makes a birdie on 15. He rolls in a long putt for birdie on 16. He does give one back on 17, but that does not end up mattering. He's in at five over. He is a long way off the lead, but our defending champion will be playing this weekend. Yes, uh, and John Rahm has hit the ball really well. You know, he's hit just as many greens as Max Holma and Bryson DeChambeau, but he's really struggled on the greens. Uh, and, and perhaps some of this has to do with the, the conditions and his frustration. A lot of gestures from him a lot of uh you know hand signals john rom was fooled on the greens on many occasions and and i think that's ultimately the leading cause of his struggles because you know he, he had his troubles yesterday off the tee drove it out of position on a number of occasions but this ultimately comes down to what he's done on the greens rory mcelroy got through the first round patrick at one under and there was a lot of optimism about his chances of making a run at not only a green jacket, but the career grand slam. Well, I uh, hate to count anyone out, especially Rory McIlroy, but a five over 77 in which he made zero, I repeat, zero birdies to fall down to T35 is probably not the path to victory. His first round at Augusta National since, I believe, the third round of the 2015 tournament. Very difficult uh, week that week as well. Uh, I believe that, that was Smiley Kaufman's coming out party that day uh, where he did not make a birdie. 
and through two rounds, through eight par fives, the holes where you got to get yours at Augusta National, Rory McIlroy is still even par. And I think the thing that infuriated me the most today was, you know, we we said we had previously said Colin Morikawa was not a great win player. Rory McIlroy is obviously like he's never really been that great of a win player as well. But the shot into 11, it looks like he didn't even try to flight it or anything. He just went up there and just ripped it after we saw Scotty Scheffler hit a great flighted shot, pin high, like the best you could do at 11. And Rory watches that and instead just rips an iron and it doesn't have a prayer it's like a slow death. He just watched the wind hit it. It's like, uh, 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 boom, water. And it just like, that's, that's the difference between where Scotty Scheffler is currently and where Rory McIlroy is. And through two rounds, that is 10 shots. Uh, 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 boom, water. Literally, it, I mean, it was, every, everybody knows you, everybody hit it right there. Everybody <laughs> hit it right. You just hit it right. Make five. Maybe you make a four. I mean, it's a par five. And he's laughing. I don't like the laughing. I know it's a defense mechanism for him, right? You're a little embarrassed probably, so you laugh it off. Don't like that. Uh, that's it's, being it's just poor. It's poor wedge play. It's poor iron play. I mean, all these par fives, he's got little wedges in from... I mean, he didn't have a great angle into two, but there's no opportunity there. Into eight, no opportunity. At 13, he, it, it's not like it lands on the ridge and spins back. Like He landed it short of the ridge, and it stops there. There's no flight. In, it's not skipping up the ridge at, at all. It's just off 20 yards, uh, you know, uh, 15 yards, and it's distance control. The distance control is so different between he and Scotty Scheffler. It, mm -hmm. That's the 10 shot difference. There are some big names who will not be around for the weekend. The very generous Justin Thomas uh, not only moved the cut line, uh, but moved it and kept himself out. So he got the sixes in yet fell to seven. Now let me illustrate what happened here, Patrick? Um, standing on 15 T, Justin Thomas was even par, which even par right now would be a tie for 15th. Maybe he gets one. Like, listen, I know 15. Mm -hmm. I know 15 was playing hard. I, I know. I know the final stretch is playing hard, but guys made birdies there. Like, maybe he gets one birdie coming in. And he's one under. He's in a tie for eighth. We would have talked about him 40 minutes ago. Instead. He finishes by making a double on 15, a double on 16, a bogey on 17, and a double on 18, seven over par over his final four holes to shoot a 79, move the cut, and remove himself from this golf tournament. I will say I'm happy that he moved the cut line because I had a very mean tweet lined up about the spring break crew and which of the four would be working this weekend. But mm. that never happened, so I was unable to press send. Thank God. I probably would have gotten a little heat from it. I was feeling frisky. I was running. My patient was patience was running thin at that moment. Mm -hmm. But, oh, my gosh. Like, you play your first 32 holes in even par. You're on the tee of a par five. <laughs> and you're going home. <laughs> he, he laid it up into the water into the water yeah just like just a, a rope hook layup into the water roll it into the water i don't get him i think it's got to be upstairs at the moment first time greg first time in justin thomas's career that he has now missed three straight major championship cuts this one in obviously very ugly fashion this is similar to last year, right? I mean, you're seeing two 79s in his last four rounds of golf. Is that right? I mean, that's last, uh last four yeah. at Augusta National. Is that is that what you're referencing? No, Val, no, Valspar. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Saturday of Valspar. I'm sorry. So it, that's 
just not an okay number for one of the best players in the world. I mean, I get it's a tough day and you go shoot the, the scoring average and go shoot 75, you shoot 76 on it and you have a bad day. I, I understand that, but to shoot 79 and to do it that way is the, the wheels can't come off that quickly for a high level major champion type player. It, they just can't. It, it's uh it's hard to explain. It, it's probably something upstairs at, at that point when you're shooting these ballooning numbers, it, it's a sign that you're um lost. And I don't know where he turns because he's fired everybody. Mm, well, yeah, he hasn't fired everybody. So, uh, yeah, I mean, last year in the major championships, the last two rounds in the 80s, has a 79 this year. He would have missed all four cuts of the majors last year if not for an eight-footer on the 36th hole that he made at the PGA Championship. And, he, I mean, he obviously didn't factor out Oak Hill. But, Rick, are you, are you saying he should uh, emancipate himself? or? I'm what? saying, <laughs> I'm saying... Don't miss, don't mix family and business. We did see it with Zan. I mean, Xander distanced himself from, uh, oh, yeah, sorry, Stefan the ogre. I think, um, I don't know, man. I I have no idea, but this can't continue. No, but uh, like, is there something going on? Like, why doesn't he? Why doesn't he trust the people around him? You know, I, I don't understand it. Uh, um, like John Graham's a phenomenal putting coach and he's made changes with you that have worked. And you know that the fight between a coach and a player is getting the player to do what the coach says. So at some point you got to look in the mirror and say, okay, is this, is my coach the problem? is my caddy the problem or am I the problem? Like, am I resisting in some way? Cause this is too many big incidents, right? Too many people to, um, let go of that are clearly very competent, you know, very high level, good, smart people who have helped a lot of people in the past. It's, con- it's concerning to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Concern indeed. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, that question right there from Andrew is a very good segue to our next missed cut because, uh, the close ties of Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth are obvious. And Andrew wants to know who has a better outlook, Justin Thomas or Jordan Spieth. Well, Patrick, uh, Jordan Spieth had his own little meltdown. He just did it earlier in the day, a bogey on 14, a quadruple nine, on 15, a bogey on 17. He played his final five holes this morning at uh, six over. So, mm-hmm. so J- JT got him, got him there seven. But over. he made three at 12. That's true. He, he made did. a beautiful. He made a beautiful he three at, at 12, and then Jordan it was Spieth, over. And then Jordan Spieth went out and shot a uh, two over 74 on uh, in his second round, which was actually pretty good. But that was uh, much too little, Patrick. Much too late. Yes, so to answer Andrew's question of who has a better outlook, JT or Spieth, I'm going to say Jordan Spieth because he has three major championships and Justin Thomas has two, and that might be where their careers end up. So uh, from that outlook, Jordan Spieth wins at the end of his career. Uh, Greg and I talked about this a little bit with obviously the wild shots or wild shots, but the short game. What happened on 15? Oh, okay. So I'm glad I, I, uh, I think I, I think I was putting my earpieces in when you guys were talking about this earlier, where it's like, I don't even know what's wrong with Jordan's beats game. All of it, all of it's yeah. wrong. <laughs> Every day, something different is wrong. Yeah. That's the pro that's the problem. <laughs> that's not great. <laughs> like, I don't know. And, and he's like, I hit the piss out of it. And you're like, no, I'm not sure you did. And then like, I, I just like, I cannot even describe to you what is good or what is bad about this game right now. They, both of these guys, 
have a problem right now with like home base. I'm not saying family life. I'm saying home base in their game. Like Colin Morikawa loses his iron play. He loses his game. Jordan Spieth loses his short game. He loses his game. Uh, Justin Thomas loses his iron play. He loses his game. You know, you, you need to have that foundational home base thing. The, this is the, these are the things that made these guys two and three time major champions. It made them great. And when those start to suffer, like Jordan Spieth's short game is clearly suffering. And, and it, that's never happened before in his career. Uh, it's, uh, it's alarming to me because you don't know where to turn when you start to lose your, uh, when you start to lose your superpower. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I, I, I unfortunately have, have more bad news. I'm, I'm sad to report that our beautiful boy, Victor Hovland, um, shot Ooh. an 81 in mm. the afternoon, um, which had a snowman, a, a very bizarre and ugly snowman on two. It's an eight, which if you're wondering how he made an eight on two, I, I wonder the same, but he was in the left trees. I think he took a drop and then hit a tree. His ball went back into the bush and he, I think he took another drop and made hey, I think you missed a tap in. Okay, no, that was that was, that was on fifteen. Oh, that, that 15. okay, okay, okay. This was a different hole. That was okay. Yeah, so so he did that on two. He doubled four. He made a double on fifteen, which that was the missed tap in Greg, uh, where he just kind of walked behind it and gave it a gave it a love tap. It it did not drop. That that was uh, that Greg is it's. It's obviously uncharacteristic for Victor to shoot an 81. It is uncharacteristic to have like that moment of frustration and just seemingly not caring. And um, it stinks. He he hasn't played well. Yeah. He's not going to be around for the Yeah, it, It's the same story as Spieth and JT, right? You lose your superpower and all of a sudden the game becomes so difficult. And in conditions like this, um, no, I think for Victor, this is less, uh, th this is not as chronic as it seems to be for Spieth and, and JT. So I give him a lot more credit, give him a lot more time. I'm still not sure about the coaching switches, um, uh, and the timing of that, especially coming off of a, a tour championship victory, but nonetheless, you're working on some things in your game. You don't quite fully have them. He was very vocal about that uh, coming into the week. He's trying to put it together. And this isn't the day to try to, you know, trust your new golf swing. Uh, so I, I understand how things can kind of unravel in that case. Uh, Rick, if, if you want to get even more sad, look uh, at Victor's uh, third shot on, on masters.com in his reaction. Third it's, shot on two. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, I saw it. it. He, I, it is brutal. It's it's him being like, that's the one where it, it, it looks like it just goes right in front of him and bounces to the side. It looks like he's like about to cry. It almost. He's like, oh no. He's like, he oh, I cannot believe I just did that. Yeah, because I think he had just taken a drop from the azaleas. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think it hit the tree in front of him. And went back into the azaleas and he took another drop. Pretty sure. Yeah. He just got punched in the face early today. I mean, playing your first five holes, seven over. And then from there, you're probably a little disinterested. It's windy. You don't have your game. And you're like, oh gosh. And then you make a birdie on 13. You're like, oh, maybe I'm back in this. And then, yeah, it long day out there for them. He'll be fine. Like, for sure. I mean, he opened four under on his first nine. He yeah, shot seventy one yesterday. He played his first not his first nine four under. He played his next twenty seven in twelve over. Yeah, so I mean he's he's got he's got that nine under or a four under that he can hang his hat on. He needs a little. He's got to get things sorted out, but it, he'll he'll yeah. be fine. He'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, let's uh, just quickly. Two reigning major champions missed the cut. Wyndham Clark, Brian Harmon, Dustin Johnson also missed the cut. Uh, Wyndham. 
Wyndham is a that dude. I don't know what the hell is going on with that guy. Um, let's look at the betting favorites, Josh. Do we have? I've I have no idea what these odds are. I imagine Scotty Scheffler is like even money. Okay, plus one twenty five to win the Masters. Bryson DeChambeau plus four fifty. Max Homa five to one. Then everybody else is fourteen to one or longer. That's Colin Ludwig at twenty two. Nikolai at twenty five. Cam Smith playing very well. Uh, thirty five to one. He's so dirty in the short game. And then Xander is uh, 40 to one. Anything there, boys, or you want me to find you some longer numbers? Uh, no, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go longer. I, I look, I, I would say that anybody in this tournament who's even or better has a chance. Um, if you're not going to go with Scotty up top or Bryson up top, I'd be fine with either of those. Um, It'd be fascinating to watch Max Homa. I, but I think other than Scotty, my favorite on this list is Camp Smith. Camp Smith's iron play is, it, he is Camp Smith, right? This is great iron play, ridiculous short game in putting. And if this weather calms down a little bit, he can go nuts. He can go nuts with the way he putts. Such he's a good guy spot. to watch out for. Yeah, he, and I'm not even sure he's he's like had even the good stuff yet. I think he's just been kind of okay, and he's he's in the mix, and he's given up a couple of, of shots every time that that I've seen him. So yeah, I mean, it's it, that would be fine. I'd be I would think it'd be very interesting if Cam Smith got into the mix. I'd love if Cam Smith won, given uh, he is captain of Ripper GC. Which... That's your squad, right? Yeah, Rick. By the way, if you find their editor. I know he's there at Augusta National. I tweeted at him last week looking for a hat that Cam Smith was wearing. It was a corduroy Ripper GC hat, and he didn't reply to me. Wow, um, that's shocking. So if you find him in the press building, please pass him my information. I, I barely reply to you. Why would this guy reply to you? Okay, this is, you don't have to tell the masses about what's, that, that I'm what's blowing his, up your phone. What's his um, name? The golf editor on Twitter. I don't know. I just know he's the golf editor. Cause that's I was like, damn, that's, that's a sick handle. Um, but okay. So I'm going to go with another live guy. I don't hate Bryson at four and a half to one, given how he's driving the golf ball. I think he's going to be really hard to beat to tell you the truth. Bryson is the captain of my crushers. That is true. So I was going to ask him, I was going to ask him in the, in the presser, if he happened, if he does pull this off and win the masters, how would it equate to winning the team final last year as captain of the crushers? Would that have been a tongue in cheek question or a real question? I mean, it's a real question. He can take it however he wants. Okay. okay fair enough. I, mean, I, I hope that he would say, uh, it would be a billion times better, <laughs> but I don't know. I would love to see him in a green jacket. It would just be great. Um, I like him. I like Xander Shoffley, obviously, 40 to 1. The guy's going to do it. Minimum backdoor top five. And then a little bit further down, if you if you want to get weird tomorrow and have fun, I would say bet on the Cam Young and Tommy Fleetwood group. Someone's going to go 64-74 this weekend. I would say it's from that group. And But for me, Matt Fitzpatrick. Kind of just there. And I know he hates his irons. He said his irons aren't good. That he's pulling a page out of Bryson's book, uh, complaining about the equipment. But the guy's a winner, and I think he's a little frisky right now. I had a lot of things I wanted to say, um, but I don't remember what they were. Oh, how about this, Greg? Bryson, winged foot. If he wins at Augusta National. He'll become the only the third guy to win major championships at both of those places. Wow. Would you like to fathom a guess at who the other two are? Uh, well, fuzzy. Bang, number one. Yeah, good job. Um, we got to be going... Yeah, my Hale. Hale Irwin didn't win a Masters. Not Hale. Mm -mm. Um, Patrick. How many people are there? Sorry. Just uh, two. There's two. We've got one of them. Could have been Phil Mickelson. 
Gregory. Oh, man. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. Other I'll than tell, Fuzzy, I don't know. I'll tell you, it was 1959 at Wingsfoot. Does that help at all? No. The chat is saying Billy Casper. The chat is uh, correct. Mm. Well, you know what else? Um, Claude Harmon was the pro at Wingfoot and won a Masters. Also, okay. not not that he won the Masters, obviously, but Bobby Jones won at Wingsfoot. A lot of ties. Wow. Okay, here's another one for Bryson. Mm-hmm. Four American players. This is uh, per Justin Ray. Four American players since 1960 have won the U.S. Open in the Masters by age 30 or younger. Bryson is trying to join these four players. Who are they? I'm sorry. Can you read it again? Spieth, Tiger. Since when? 1960. Nicholas. In in the ballpark. Same ballpark, Greg. As Nicholas. Arnie. Yeah. Did he just get them all? Yeah. That's why he's got the trophy. Bang. That's why. That's why. Okay. One, more thing. One more thing. Or we'll open it up after this. Go watch Terrell Hatton on nine. Oh, you talked about this earlier. I, <laughs> I was greenside at nine. He had a 50. It was probably 40 or 50 foot putt down the hill. The wind was howling. He hated it. He hit a 40 or 40 foot putt. He must have hit it. I think he, I think it traveled 25 feet. I mean, he left it woefully short. The second it came off his club base, he was just in full on terror mode. He doesn't like the as, golf course. As he gets he's the cat reading, tomorrow. He, yeah, he gets the cat tomorrow. As he's reading, so he's still away. He's playing with Keegan and Pavone. He's still away. And as he's reading the next putt, potato chip bag blows across the green. Oh <laughs> he's no. Like, he is like fuming. <laughs> like he is just absolutely fuming. He then proceeds to hit that but he misses that one and as he's going to like tap it in or whatever, uh he turns his club around into the shotgun again and he starts firing at the wind into the sky for <laughs> five not just spraying it everywhere. <laughs> it's on and it's on i checked it's on masters.com they didn't cut it or anything so go look up terrell hatton I, it might be his first or his second putt on nine uh if you would like a little bit of uh if you'd like a little bit of entertainment tonight that's awesome and you know reminder that was one of my big storylines coming into the week so i'm glad that it's uh living up to the billing <laughs> hit us with some questions here um Patrick, how do you feel that Jordan Spieth missed the cut for our one and done? You and me together. We, we just are the absolute biggest suckers in the whole world. I'm a boomer bus uh, type player, so it's going to be win or miss cut for me uh, typically. So I'm okay with it. Patrick, or uh, excuse me, Greg, where does Xander Shoffley finish his golf tournament? T7. Ooh. I think he gets real close tomorrow. Okay. Joe, therein, therein lies the problem. Okay. Joe, Joe Musso is the next player to complete the Grand Slam currently a professional. Um, yeah, Jordan Spieth, Valhalla. Jeez. No, it's not gonna happen. Uh yeah, Brooks Kepka. I think I'm on team. No one ever completes the Grand Slam again. I disagree. Or 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 also or in our also, lifetime. Or also Scotty wins the slam this year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's... And also, I mean, Colin, Colin Morikawa's gotten like his more most difficult one out of the way with the open, because he can't play in the wind. Yeah, he he sucks in the wind, as shown by today. But like, what if you? I mean, like, there's an avenue where he wins this weekend, and, it, and it's not crazy. And then he just has to win the U.S. Open. Where personally, I think that's where his game is best suited. If Colin won the Masters this week, that would be, uh, uh, first off, just completely shocking because of how he's been playing. But we would, I mean, what, three majors in his first 16 or 17? Yeah. Three and 17. Come on. Yeah. 
He just win, just wins them. Mm -hmm. That's shocking. You got, so I think Scotty's really interesting uh, in that. I also think there are some young guys like Ludwig playing his first his first major. Can't win them. Who hasn't knows? proven it yet. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I would say that Rick is probably right. Yeah, I love, I, I love hearing those words. What about Rom? Rom has Rom has two. He's great at a PGA, great at the Open. Nah. Do you guys ever root for players like for Scotty? It's like, oh man, could you just like win the PGA instead, so you're halfway to the Grand Slam instead of winning two Masters? Do you guys ever root like that? No, I do. I. I do in I, the back of my mind. I think I will now. Yeah. Yeah. I think, my, like, I think my favorite thing is great masters players. Like I'd rather Scotty win just five masters and five majors. That's it. Nah. I prefer that. I think the masters is different. What about like Brooks Kepka though? It's like, do you really need all those PGA championships? <laughs> yeah. You should be able to trade two for one. I do feel, I do feel like that with Brooks. Yeah. It's like, oh man, like just, yeah, give two Wanamakers for a Claret Chuck. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to do that. Um, somebody asked about my favorite purchase in the merch shop. Just like everything. There's so much good stuff. What do you guys think about the gnome situation that goes on? Where these gnomes are like, I think someone, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say anything that will get me kicked out of Augusta National forever. So they sell out within like 30 minutes of, 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 the store opening every day so you have to like line up as soon as the gates open and go in there and battle people to get a gnome i i want to know what you're gonna say like if it's a uh <laughs> like a pineapple situation for some couples if you if you're picking up what i'm throwing down <laughs> i'm picking up what you're throwing down but no it was not gonna be like that i was just gonna reference what people might do to get one but oh I like i didn't want to like punch a kid or something. Sure. Yeah. You say it. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Punch a kid. Yeah. I, I much prefer the watch you got. I think that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's exciting. I, I'll, uh, I wish I had it, but I would, I would take a picture. So we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, I thought that was, I didn't realize that they did. Dude, there's like, it's not just like pro shop stuff. There's like a section of, high society items where like you know it's like one of a kind this italian artisan made this like leather bat like it, it's like there's a whole section that's insane do they have a a, a grilling section with like uh spatulas with the master's logo <laughs> on it stuff like that i didn't see that but they could but they could um i i they they pulled the winners of the media lottery and it's not us. So anyone, you know, yeah, I don't know if they want me to say it, but yes, there are people that, you know, Oh, yeah. why, why was there no, uh, showboating on Twitter? Yeah. See, that's why I'm not, that's why I'm not saying anything. Do I have to work on Monday? Is that what you're telling me? Type <laughs> of thing? No, it's not us, but, okay, uh, good. the, <laughs> I'm not eligible. I found out. I am technically broadcast, not media or whatever. So, however they distinguish that, I am not eligible. Well, that's mm. disappointing. Yeah, I know. I went to register, and she was like, "No." <laughs> I'll give you my byline for one of the stories. I'll just create a profile for you in CBSSports.com. It was a tough scene for me. I was like, I was like, okay, well, now tail between my legs, I will just walk away now. Thank you. Very I'm much. not registered for what. <laughs> No, I'm I'm playing I'm playing on Monday. <laughs> yeah, where do I find my tea time? Yeah, I also will tell you offline, but I I think there might be some real celebrity star power at the Masters tomorrow. Oh well, Gabby Herzig of the Athletic ran into Harry Styles. I would not run. I would not know Harry Styles if he was in this stream yard right now with us. Niall Horan was there too. Half of One Direction. If there was another box, are they coming back together? If there was another box, Rick, Patrick, Greg, and another box, and it was Harry Styles, I wouldn't know that that was Harry Styles. <laughs> yeah, I would say, uh, can I can I help you? <laughs> yeah, sorry, bud, you're in the wrong spot here. We, I mean, you probably get us confused 
So, so I've been told. Star power. <laughs> what uh? What type of what field oh. is the star power? Like Hollywood? Like let's just say TikTok. Like, are they going to follow Bryson around? Let's just Mr. say Beast? I know who they are. So the sh it's a pretty short list, right? So musician the, we were, we were, sports. We were walking around, and people are like, "Oh, that's Mark Melanson." Like, who the hell? And how would the you closer? Know? Yeah, I did see uh, Larry, Fitz Larry Fitzgerald's everywhere, so that's not a secret. Uh, uh, he Smith. thought, did he think there was a pro am? <laughs> <laughs> that's good, Patrick. That's good. It's Wednesday. Uh, I'm playing. What, what are you guys doing? Where's my sticks? Uh, let's just Me and Scotty. I, I hope this. I hope this comes to fruition because this is. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. Can he pick it? Yeah, he has plenty of time. Backup now. He does have plenty of time. Anything I else? Think, I think Alex right in the chat. That's my guess. Oh, I don't know. I guess we'll have. Oh. To <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny all right anything else no I'm we good. covered more than i expected to <laughs> we have entered the weekend at augusta national what, see that would be sick if it was the weekend that i was referring to and i and i threw like a little that would He's be noticeable sick. does he still have the hair uh we just <laughs> josh just switched the logo to first cut after dark <laughs> That's pretty funny, Josh. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that'll do it for us. Big thanks to producer Josh. Big thanks to Patrick McDonald at P. McDonald CBS. Greg Ducharme at The Real GFD. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time.